Good morning, friends. In the present lecture, first we discuss what we have discussed in the earlier classes, and then we will move forward to the next topic, that is defining the search problem and how to move for the search design approach. So, we will revise. We have already seen that there are basically three, five steps in the research design of marketing research process. In the first step, we define the problem. In the second step, we will describe the research design. So in the present lecture, we will discuss about this part, define the problem part. And then subsequently we will move forward to the research design. Up to now we have discussed that what is the marketing research problem and what is the research and uh, uh, it is a systematic and it is an objective approach. Now when we define or describe a problem, classified into basically two parts. First is your management, decision problem, and marketing research problem. So in a management research or management decision problem or in a marketing research problem, we can describe the given problem set in these two parts. If we describe what is a management decision problem, means that for a problem which can include a managerial decision making process, it can include a management decide on that can be a part of your suppose your sales is going down if the sales is not going well then it can be the cause because of the, the marketing problem it can be because of the promotion problem it can be because of the price problem it can be because of the location problem it can be because of the changes in the management we don't know we get only an analysis or a data from the market that the sales are not going well. If the sales are not going well, what can be the causes? A marketing causes. The marketing causes can be the price, can be the problem with the product, can be the problem with the promotion, it can be the problem with the place. If we all call properly called as 4 Bs of marketing. Now when I decide that for this problem I want to search, analyze the price part, product part, promotion part or the place part that will become a marketing research problem. Up to now this is a management decision problem. When I decide on this, this, this and this and try to find out the answer in this regard then it become a marketing research problem. So a marketing research problem in which we describe the marketing component, we identify the marketing component, we try to solve the marketing component from the given management decision problem. Okay. If I search for a price problem from this basic problem, then it becomes a marketing research problem. If I search the product problems, if I search the promotion issues, if I search the location conflicts, to solve or to answer this bigger problem, then it becomes a marketing research problem. Okay. When we see the slides, when we see the presentation, Can describe it more elaborately. If 
if we go for problem definition approach if we go for by the identification or by the solution of the problem is important by the problem identification is very important part in solving a problem the basic thing which comes to our mind is when a problem is very defined it is how solved and the problem and the information is often essential to solve the problem and when how if the problem is framed accurately then it will be easy to solve it problem a research problem a well defined research problem will describe the subsequent stages of the marketing how to solve that problem a well defined problem will describe the stages describe the steps how to solve that problem so that's why it's important suppose for a marketing research problem We see the slide. Why it is important? The problem which is well defined is how solved. Formulation of the problem is often more essential than its solution. Research problem drives subsequent stages of the research process. The management decision problem is the difference between suppose the sales is not taking well, then it becomes a marketing research or the management decision problem. Usually indicated indicated by the symptoms. It is primarily exploratory in nature. It's, we are identifying the basic structure of the problem, and then subsequently we describe the broad components and information components of the problem. It will also describe what information components should be collected. when we describe a management decision or marketing decision problem in a form that will guide the data collection effort and provide the required information to solve the marketing problem it become a marketing decision problem if we clearly see this through an example so marketing decision problem elaborate the broad statement into the sub components of the part sub components of the problem Before doing that, we will see how it goes. Suppose if I want to decide on the price, okay, the management decide to change the price or make a hike in the price, then. It's a decision-making problem. You have to decide on this. You have to take a decision on it. So that's why it is called management decision or marketing decision problem. Now, how or when to change the price? We should collect the information from the customer whether the price is currently the price is effective or not for that purchase. Now we want to info, get information on basically the current level of satisfaction regarding the price factor whether the current price is good for customer second price request is if i increase the price what can be the causes what can be the result in the demand if i decrease the price what can be the result in the demand so i will consider the price request is suppose to take another example in the promotion suppose 
management of my business try to analyze the current promotion strategy to decide whether the current promotion strategy is adequate or not then you have to decide on it will become a marketing decision problem or management decision problem now to get deep into the problem what we will decide if the current effectiveness whether the current advertising is effective or not the change in promotion strategy impact on sales means is that the promotion or the advertising campaign what you are running is related to the customer perception about the brand the customer your intention to position that brand into the customer mind whether that relation is there or not and whether the current effective advertising effective or not so you can do a conduct a survey or a kind of thing so if i describe the component into this part then it this become the marketing decision problem so this is a management decision part or marketing decision part and this is a marketing research problem right break the management decision or the marketing decision problem into the component information component part then it become a management marketing decision marketing research problem suppose we will see the basic product product now you have to check whether the, the current offering or the current product is to be changed or not so you have to decide on it that's why it is a management decision or marketing decision problem what information component you can achieve i can get the satisfaction level customer satisfaction level to the, towards the current product whether there is a requirement of new product or what can be the new features so we will decide what is the current level of satisfaction of the customer for this product we will decide we will require the information about what are the features they require in the new product whether they require a new product as a whole whether they require some changes in the existing product what they want so that's why i can decide on better solve this problem so this part of this component is a marketing research problem and this become a marketing decision making problem and we decide the major components of the marketing research problem marketing research problem we define the unit of analysis it means what is your target population what from which from where you can get the information individual customers household retailers can be the organizations also what are the key variables or the construct you want to achieve suppose for a satisfaction level so what are the various constraints on the satisfaction whether it's a brand whether it's a price whether it's a promotion whether it's an offer whether it's a discount then the gate get what suppose you want to uh, analyze the loyalty then what are the factors that derive the loyalty whether that the uh, price derive the loyalty whether the location derive the loyalty whether the uh, features derive the loyalty whether the brand name derive the loyalty i want to purchase same brand again and again but whether the sense of identification is deriving the loyalty so what are the basic features so what are the key constructs what are the key variables but like describe the basic 
problem in your question. Research objectives or we can say the research questions. Research will in the later part we decide that how you approach to a problem, we will see this part later. What how the research objectives is related to research questions or something. There are two basic uh, types of objective, broad objective which provide a perspective or bigger picture. Bigger picture means suppose I want to increase the sales. So sales, current decline of the sales is my is my research problem, broad statement. And a specific objective for the sales, I need to improve my product, I need to improve my pricing strategy, I need to improve my promotion and scheme. That becomes a specific objective of the research. Okay. In this part, basically there are three basic components in which you can describe a marketing research problem, the unit of analysis where you can get the data, what you want to measure and what are your objectives, broad objectives and specific objectives. This is what we have discussed earlier, when I just want to describe on a new product, I can get customer preference, I can analyze the purchase intention of the new product, if I want to change the advertising or the promotion strategy, then I want to determine the effectiveness of the advertising, I want to determine the level of satisfaction with the current advertising scheme from the company. When I decide or when I change, want to change the price, then I have to decide on the price elasticity, I have to determine the price elasticity of the problem. In relation to the demand of the problem, whether the price is directly related to demand or demand is increasing or decreasing with the price or not. So when we describe the specific component of this bigger picture, then it becomes a marketing research problem and these become the marketing decision or management decision problems. So how you decide, how you define the research problem, there are basically three or five steps. Discussion with the decision makers. The decision makers, suppose the decision makers if I am doing a consumer research, then my decision makers is consumer. If I am doing an organization research, then the key holders of the organizers or the stakeholders of the organizers, organization or the management of the organization is the my decision maker. Interview the industry experts. Suppose uh, I want to do marketing research on uh, beverage industry, then I have to interview or get then I have to get information from the industry experts. What are the basic structure of the industry, what are the basic competition structure of the industry, then I get information about what is the status level of, current level of brand in the beverage industry, what are the basic competition structure. So I have to ask the basic components of the industry from the district. That is the key part when you are doing research on industry specific basis or national specific basis or a sector specific basis, then you have to ask the industry experts. Secondary data information is very important. Secondary data can include the reports. Secondary data can include the industry reports. Secondary data can include the journals, books, government reports, government publications. So that's how you can analyze the secondary data whether there is, if you suppose you are doing a uh, research on fan, financial transactions, then you can get information from RBI. If you are doing research on banking transactions, you can get information from uh, banking institution or RBI, when you are doing research on consumer or FMCG product, there are various consultancy which provide uh, information or uh, regular reports on the industry, ups and downs, what are the favorite brands, what are the brand positioning of the various products. So those are very industry reports which are regularly available in the market. Consultancy, some of the consultancy give regularly industry reports. So what does uh, this Secondary source here, it gives the basis. Basis of a strong reason, a quantitative reason, a justified reason to do or approach to a problem. That is the basic advantage of secondary data. This is also called a literature review. Sometimes in, when you write a research paper, the analysis of uh, this reports or existing studies and existing journals or books, this part is generally called literature review. 
then you have to do some kind of qualitative. Qualitative research is not research which is not quantitative. Those differences. Second, the qualitative research is generally the research which results came out from this discussions, interview, and in non-structured format when you have a dialogue with someone, when you have an in informal interview or discussion with someone, then you are and identify the the underlying behavior of the system when you identify, try to identify the underlying patterns of the system of any problem. Suppose when I am discussing with some uh, uh, industry experts in this, then that interview will be qualitatively researched on what is the basic words they use, some, some uh, techniques are like text mining, some techniques are like pattern mining. So what that does it give? It gives the basic information about the structure which is followed, whether, whether the discussion is towards a negative approach, whether the discussion is towards a positive approach, whether the discussion is towards is showing some growth in the market, whether the discussion is showing some negative impact of my research on the market. So that's the qualitative research. Quantitative is generally based on numbers, that numbers came out from the secondary data sources, that numbers came, came out from the primary data sources when you conduct a market survey. So when I fill a questionnaire from the customer, that like rating or ranking or all this information, when we convert that attitude or that emotion into the number, then it becomes a quantitative research. And uh, then some quantitative techniques or tests will be applied. But the qualitative research is generally involved the analysis of your non-formal discussions with the industry experts, the decision makers, the stakeholders, customers, anything. Environment, as we all see, environment, scanning is important before going to a result, before defining a problem. Environment include your all political environment economic environment, social environment, and technical environment or technological environment. So what are the political components that affect that problem? What are the economical component? What are the social, what are the technical or technological component that affect that problem? Formulation. So identification of this environmental component is very important. So when I describe the stepwise process, you can get environmental context. How you get an environmental context? You first find out the past information and forecast, the resources and the constraint, then you are formulate the objectives. Suppose you are doing a market research, then, then what are the buyer behavior, what are the consumer behavior, what are the legal environments or economic environments that affect the problem and what are the technological skills that are required to. Suppose you are uh, want to research on marketing research on mobile communication. So for mobile communication you need to know what are the buyer behavior, consumer behavior of the mobile usage, what are the legal frameworks. Suppose you are want to study on uh, mobile banking. So you have to study at what are the legal framework of mobile banking in India, what are the rules of RBI regarding the mobile banking in India, what is the potential or what is the last transition, mobile transition happened in India? What is the current potential of an, uh, a mobile banking in India? What are the technical skills required for attaining or for uh, this pursuing of a mobile banking? So this is called an environment analysis. When you formulate a problem, when you discuss about the environmental issues or environmental aspects of the problem, all political, social, economic, and technical. Broadly. When you develop uh, an approach to a problem, then uh, thank you, sorry. Approach to a problem is When, when you define 
a research problem then to describe the theory involved in it then you describe the model involved in it then you describe This is question in it. Can you describe hypothesis in the problem? In the basic unit, that is information components. Information components are basic unit. What kind of information you get from the primary sources? What kind of information get you from the secondary sources? So these are the primary basic unit of information you collect from the different sources. Theory and models are what we have described earlier. Is a literature review. Suppose you want to study a consumer satisfaction. So you are not the only one who describes the consumer satisfaction or in any any sector, suppose you want to describe a consumer satisfaction or determine the consumer satisfaction for mobile banking. So for mobile banking, you have to identify what are the basic theories of measuring the customer satisfaction. So for consumer satisfaction.
ease of use plus the function of usefulness plus the function of trust plus the function of social factor plus that so if i describe my research model in an equation format then it become a mathematical representation and i describe that format my model in this diagram and it become a graphical representation when i describe my model in a kind of paragraph or text and don't write any equation i don't write draw any diagram when i describe in a text or format it become a verbal presentation verbal presentation of your model Theory is the generalization that we make about the constructs, set of systematically interrelated components, summarizes what is known about the object of the study, where are the range, the facts we need because uh, this will not divert our approach from the given objective. It will predict the further facts that should be found, or predict the further factors that this is if you want to. Employ and determine the customer satisfaction from mobile dining. These are the factors you have to study. So that will strengthen our background. Okay. Models. Analytical model can be a verbal, graphical, or mathematical. Verbal, describe in text. Graphical and mathematical. Now we will see about the research question and hypothesis. So suppose. Suppose for an objective like, I want to study of a store, of my store. Study what is my brand vision of my store, what is the brand preferences of my store. I am an owner of a brand new store, I have a company chain. And what kind of this is question I want to ask. First, what are my competitors? So, what are my competitors for this? What I need? Market report. Market report is a kind of secondary source. Secondary data source. Suppose, what is my customer perception towards the store? So, for this, I need to do survey. This is Primary information, primary data source. So these are some research questions. You can further describe the research questions. What what are my competitors? You can what are my customer perception about my store? Why consumer purchase from my store? What are the different factors that consumer like, consumer dislike? So that can be the further research questions. And subsequently, you can describe that what are how you find that information answer of that question? How you get information from the market? So this is called information component. So when you describe the research objective in a question form, it becomes a research question. When you describe the source from which you can get answer from the research or the research question, uh, question then become an information component. 
and then we will still discuss how this research question can be converted into hypothesis. Suppose what is hypothesis? Hypothesis is a kind of unproven statement which has to be proved from your uh, collection part, data analysis part. Suppose I ask a question like what is my most liked thing cold drink. So what is my favorite cold drink? Most liked cold drink. So for this I have to make a hypothesis. So what is a hypothesis? Hypothesis is a handle represented by H. Hypothesis is an unproven statement. So I declare some kind of a statement and then test for the test. So I suppose I just declare that, that The Pepsi is the most like cold drink. So I don't know. I have to test it. So that means it becomes my hypothesis, and from my data analysis and from my data collection, and then for the results, I will test whether this my hypothesis. My hypothesis means my assumption that the Pepsi is the most like cold drink, the most favorite cold drink of the youth, or that uh, particular sample will be tested. And based on that test, my hypothesis will be accepted or rejected. So this is. This question is converted into hypothesis. There are two kinds of hypothesis, null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis. Null hypothesis is generally that hypothesis which describe no relation hypothesis. No relation means uh, I don't describe any relation between two variables. Suppose I want to test that whether there is a Between age and cold drink consumption. So this is my research question. What will be the objective? This is objective is to test the relation between age and cold drink consumption. So this is my research objective. I formulate a research question out of it. How you formulate a hypothesis? If I formulate a null hypothesis, it's a no relation to hypothesis. When I formulate it, then it represented by H0. And then I say that there is no relation between. Age and suppose cold drink consumption. What will the alternate hypothesis to show a relation? So there is a relation opposite of null between age and cold drink. So this is how all these things are related. From the research objective, you formulate a research question. From that research question, you formulate hypothesis. There can be multiple objectives. There can be multiple research questions, and there can be multiple hypotheses for a given research marketing research problem. So I have 
hypothesis is an unproven statement or position relating or phenomenon of uh, interest to the researcher or the relationship among the variables investigated. Hypothesis can be descriptive, it can be a relational. You, you describe a casual or relational hypothesis. These are some differences. Suppose my research objective is to, objective is to determine that our brand image is compared to the competitor's, competitor brand. Then what will the research question? Whether the current image of our brand is compared to the competitor brand. To determine the source of our current image problem, if this is my research objective, then what will the research question? What is the role of that? What are the different factors that make an image? Price, packaging, customer, advertising, etc. on the current image of our brand. So this is how all these two are related. If I further formulate from this research question and hypothesis, then what will the hypothesis suppose for this? What is the current image of our brand compared to competitor brand? So what can be the hypothesis? Right, there is no relationship between the current image and the competitor brand. There is no relationship between null hypothesis. I am talking about null hypothesis. There is no relationship between the price, packaging, distribution, advertising on the current image brand. There is no relationship between the packaging and the positive change in the brand image. And subsequently, you can make an alternate hypothesis. Next topic is about research design. The components of the research design definition is a framework of blueprint how you conduct the research. Components can be how you what are the basic information you needed, whether your study is a kind of exploratory research. Exploratory research means when you explore the problem, when you explore the scenario, the environment, and you are in trying to identify the problem. Descriptive or casual research. When the problem is well defined, you are not seeking out of a problem, but the problem is well defined and you want to find out the solution out of that given scenario. Specify the measurement and the scaling approach, how you measure it, what are the scale, measure, various scales you approach it. So that's all the different components you have to describe on a certain design problem. Pretest of the questionnaire, constructing of the questionnaire, how you construct the question. What the sampling process, what are the sampling size you will go for, data analysis plan. So these are some components when you describe the research design of a problem, then you describe the various components. So this is about the, the third step which we have described in, in the earlier session. In the first step, define the problem. The second step, is the research design in which we will describe what we do, we will describe from where we get the component, we will describe how we test, how we get the result done, how we test the data, how we are the process of data. And the sample from here. Okay. So this is are the basic components which is important to define or to go for a research process. So in a research design, it provides a blueprint to the uh, researcher that this is the problem, this is how you approach it, this is how you define a problem. It's a what are the different management decision problem or marketing decision problem components, what are the marketing research problem components. And in a research design, you define that what are the information components from which we to research, what are the uh, techniques we use for the data analysis, how you go for it, then what are the sampling process you adopted, whether it's a probability sampling or non-probability sampling, how you, what are the different tools you apply for the research design. This is our classification of uh, research, exploratory research, conclusive research when you 
draw some conclusions out of it. Let me give a conclusive research. It is a two part descriptive research and casual research. In a casual research process, we identify the cause and effect of a problem. In a descriptive research, we have a two type cross sectional and longitudinal, single cross sectional, multi cross sectional. So, we will describe this in a later slide. Basic difference between expertise is it provide an insight, it develop an hypothesis, it provide a tentative results, its results are very conclusive. I will show you, uh, give you an example like this. Suppose, suppose customer satisfaction. Suppose I want to explore that what are the factors that derive the customer satisfaction for my business. Suppose I am a bank and I want to test what are the factors which derive the customer satisfaction from my bank. So whether it my pricing policy, whether it my service, service means uh, your employee relationship, Employee customer relationship, whether it my tangibles, tangible means location, assets, physical facility, what I provide. So, suppose I had in this stage, it is called an exploratory research because for this problem, I explored the secondary data, I explored the primary uh, component, and then I found out that. Okay, we can go approach, we can do a research on identification of customer satisfaction based on these three factors. Okay. And then, suppose this is kind of exploratory research. If I further develop a model, suppose this is price, this is service, this is tangible, and this is customer satisfaction. I develop a model and then I collect the data, I analyze the data or test the data and put out some result, put out some conclusion. Then it becomes a conclusive result. So after this, it becomes a conclusive result or a descriptive result. So means for a given problem, for a given research project, a research design or a research can include both the exploratory part and the descriptive part. If my research only explore the underlying factors, that research is called exploratory research. If for, for a given identified model, if my research is tried to test this model, get the data from the market, analyze it test and result, take out some result, that in that way my research is called descriptive research. A descriptive research can be of two types, cross-sectional and longitudinal. Cross-sectional is simple. If this is my population, if I take a sample out of it, if I take sample out of it, same at a given particular time, preserving the demographic detail, the pattern of the population in a sample, it becomes a single cross sample. If I take out multiple samples from a population and then test the data, then it becomes multiple cross sample. Longitudinal design in which I draw the data over a long period of time, over a longitudinal time. Suppose my study started in 2010, then So suppose I get data from long period of time with a sample like uh, 1000 people, then I retain that 1000 people for this subsequent years and then analyze the data. So this type of design is called longitudinal design. In this, the sample remains the same, sample size remains the same, 
the demographic profile may change because some people from this sample will, will progress in age, will progress in designation, will progress in income level, will progress in family size. Basic advantage of this longitudinal design is you can analyze the consumption pattern, you can analyze the changes of your uh, suppose I want to analyze the brand difference, then you can analyze the brand difference over a given period of time. You can analyze the consumption pattern over a given period of time with the changes in the demographics also. So it is a beauty of that longitudinal design in which you can easily take out some patterns some long term predictions. As we go for the slide. Involve the collection of the information from an equal sample, single if I take it only one sample, multiple if I take two or more sample from a population, but obtain only ones. Number more design cohort analysis. Cohort analysis consists of a series of survey conducted at an appropriate time interval, but the cohort serves as a basic rate of analysis. A cohort is a group of respondents who experience the same event within the same time interval. So if suppose for a particular accident or suppose for a particular stock changes, price, price changes, I uh, analyze the market for given same interval that become my cohort. This is about longitudinal design. This is my demographic and for a period of time, a long period of time I study the changes on the consumption pattern. So I can this has become my code, the same sample, but in a longitudinal design. So a basic advantage is I can test the behavior pattern in a long way. Errors can be of two type, random sampling error, when I select a sample from wrong sample, which is not a representation of the population, that is a sampling error. If the sample is not representing the population, Non-sampling error can be of two types, response error and non-response error. Non-response error means if the responses are, uh, if you ask a questionnaire or if you ask something, the respondent is not able to answer, if the response is blank, the questionnaire, then you have multiple blank field in the data. Response error can be of three. A researcher error, interviewer error, and respondent error. It's very simple. Respondent means you are if you are asking a question which is not eligible to that respondent, if the respondent is not eligible to answer that question, suppose I'm, you are doing a mobile survey and, I, and as a respondent I don't have a mobile, so you don't have, if you are asking me that I am not, I'm not able to understand, answer your question, it means that is an irregularity error. Unwillingness error means if you ask some sensitive questions, some religious sensitive questions, then the people are not willingness to answer uh, their responses. Interviewer, as an interviewer, if I select the wrong respondent, that is respondent selection error. In the questioning part, if I choose the wrong wording, if I choose the sensitive wording, if I uh, don't follow a particular pattern, that is a questioning error. Recording, because uh, in some cases if I conduct some telephonic interview or internet interview or uh, internet survey, then can be some recording error, there can be some uh, mismatches in the records. Uh, then in the researcher error, uh, surrogate error means uh, you are asking, obtaining information which is not related to your objective. Okay, so that is a surrogate information error. Measurement error means uh, when you are applying, when you apply a particular scale, then the scale should you match the objective. Suppose if I ask asking gender, male and female. But if I am asking attitude, it is not precisely yes and no. If I am asking like, it not precisely should be yes and no. It should be a like a scale kind of thing. So the scale should be large. So we generally use Likert scale for uh, uh, analyzing the consumer attitude. So that Likert scale give me an advantage that to rate the response in a scale, 1 to 5. So this is the right scale. So if I wrong, use a wrong scale for measurement, it is a measurement error. Population definition error means if I wrongly determine the population of my sample. Sampling error means uh, uh, we include some uh, 
uh, uses non appropriate sampling technique for to take a sample from the population in data analysis error means if i use as a researcher i use a wrong test or inappropriate test to test the data and get the result from out of it so this is from this session this is about uh, research design and components of research design what are the different problems of marketing research i describe the problems in the next session we will discuss about uh, what can be the basic uh, measurement scale from the research